suppose the first question that I have to ask is why now? Why is Nicola Sturgeon making this speech this morning? Yeah, well, well welcome to, to Groundhog Day in Scottish politics, uh, Tom. Here, here we are again discussing constitutional um, issues. Why now? Um, I mean, Nicola Sturgeon has obviously been committed to, to independence th throughout her, her political career. She's trying to capitalise right now on emotive arguments. So we have a situation where the the UK government uh, under Boris Johnson is is not popular um, in Scotland, uh, and some of the policy actions that Boris Johnson is taking are, are not popular uh, in Scotland. So Nicola Sturgeon is trying to capitalise um, on that and that emotive argument to persuade people to to support um, independence. But the, but the fascinating thing, uh, Tom, is that you know despite all these stars aligning for for the SNP in terms of. Uh, Brexit, which the majority of people in Scotland didn't vote for, uh, and having Boris Johnson as Prime Minister, the polls show that there is still majority support for for remaining part of the United Kingdom. Interesting looking at those polls, because there was a time during the peak of the COVID crisis when those polls started getting better for those who believed in breaking up the United Kingdom, who believed in partitioning our country. Uh, the polls did get better for Nicola Sturgeon, did get better for the SNP, did get better for separatism for a few months there during the peak of the COVID crisis. In fact, the, so they got so good for the SNP that they started to say that it's the settled will of the Scottish people that they want to be a separate country uh, to the rest of the United Kingdom. However, interestingly, once COVID has been uh, getting into the rearview mirror, as we've been emerging from the COVID crisis, it's unionism that's taken over in the polls. It's interesting you don't see the SNP talking so much about the settled will of the Scottish people anymore. Uh, I'm, I'm just really curious as to why they're pushing for this at this time, given they're behind in the polls. If a vote, if a vote was held tomorrow, it's likely the United Kingdom would stay together. Uh, yeah, you, you're absolutely right, Tom. The polls uh, do suggest that. I think what we've had um, in COVID, Nicola Sturgeon was, you know, everywhere. Uh, she was on your TV um, daily in, in Scotland, the way, in the way you had... Uh, UK uh, government briefings every day. The Scottish government had its own briefings um, every day as well. So Nicola Sturgeon's popularity soared during COVID, and that came with a bounce, a uh, short-term bounce for independence uh, in the polls. What we've seen since the pandemic eased um, is a greater focus on d uh, domestic politics in Scotland. So the challenges around uh, NHS waiting lists, uh, which are incredibly long, uh, the, the, the failure to close the education attainment gap, uh, cuts to the police service, and uh, huge issues on, on the trains in Scotland, which were recently taken uh, into public um, hands. So there's a great deal of focus on that, and uh, the, the government's record is under um, quite intense scrutiny. Of course, by announcing you know, a new paper today on, on independence, the focus shifts to the SNP's comfort zone, uh, and, and the media uh, across the UK um, essentially lap that up. You know, the BBC uh, and ITV and others will be, will be covering this breathlessly throughout the day. That's an interesting uh, piece of analysis there, the idea that Nicola Sturgeon wants to move the conversation away from her own domestic failures. Although I suppose the, the issue of uh, breaking up the United Kingdom presents other issues for Nicola Sturgeon, not least her position on independent nuclear deterrence. Because, of course, the SNP for a very long time has been saying that it's against a nuclear umbrella, that it's against uh, nuclear weapons being based in Scotland. And yet, recently, given what's been going on in Ukraine, the SNP position has changed to be more supportive of NATO, which, of course, is a nuclear alliance in and of itself. NATO members, by being NATO members, uh, agree to host potentially nuclear weapons within their own territory. That seems to be a very hard circle to square. Yeah, I think, I think that's right, Tom. So we have this position where the SNP is pro-NATO, but anti-Trident nuclear missiles. Their, their government partners, uh, the Scottish Greens, are anti-NATO and anti-Trident. -anti um, what's perhaps been fascinating recently is there have been some opinion polls for the first time in a long time on people's views in Scotland towards uh, Trident and the nuclear deterrent. And they found that a majority, and quite a significant majority of people do support retaining that uh, uh, independent nuclear deterrent. So um, how the SNP can square um, that, uh, that peg, like you say, in terms of trying to appeal to the international community that they will be a responsible uh, member of NATO while looking to remove the uh, nuclear capabilities and, and shift that a few hundred miles down the road to England. Uh, it's a very difficult one to, to, for them to fix that one.
Fascinating to cite that poll, of course, because it does show that once again in this area, in this area, as in so many other areas in Scottish politics, the SNP and Scotland are different things. The SNP doesn't always speak for the people of Scotland. I suppose it's, it's important to make that distinction. I'm afraid we've only got about 20 seconds left, but just a final point from you. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely right. And that is often uh, a mistake that commentators make and all the bills that the SNP want to promote. But yes, the majority of people don't vote uh, SNP, but they are the largest party because of the constitutional issue in Scottish politics. Mm -hmm.